Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Karuba the Card Game by Haba. It's ages 8 and up, 2-6 to six players, and takes about 15 minutes to play. Let me show you how it works. The goal of the game is to get the most points, and you are ultimately going to use these tiles to build a treasure map that looks something like this. And your goal is, in order to gain points, you must connect adventurers to their same color temple. And then if there are any gold nuggets or crystals on the path on the long the way, you get uh, points for that as well. So let me show you how to get started. Each player who is playing picks uh, a color of tiles to start with. So we're gonna say it's just a two player game and these get put off to the side. Each player puts their tiles in front of them and draws three to start, which neither player gets, it's just you get to look at yourself, the other player does not get to see. So this player has these and this player has these. This only serves as a reference tool during the game and it is very important because when you are placing tiles, they must be placed on your own personal treasure map grid. Uh, they may, must be placed with the number up in the top corner. You can't place them like this or like this. It would have to be placed like this where the numbers are up in the top. So it is very important the orientation of certain key pieces uh, so that they connect because in order to get points, uh, they have to connect. So to start, each player is dealt three tiles, which the other person doesn't get to see, and you select two that you're going to play against the other player, and this is reserved to play in a future round. So this person picked these two, and this person picked these two, and saved this one, then, at the same time, however many players are playing, you flip over the two cards you've selected at the same time and you do a little math. Compare the value of the numbers added up. So this person has a total of 21 and this person has a total of seven. The one person who has the lowest total must discard one of their tiles. Uh, they can choose whichever one they want. This one has a gold piece on it and better paths, so it might be worth it to this person to discard this, and then they can't use it for the rest of the game. It's just out. Uh, they can discard this one. It's whatever they want. Uh, so they would play this on their own personal grid, and this would be their start of it, and then this person would start their grid. All right, we've zoomed out a little bit, so things are a little more clear where they go. Uh, this is the discard pile for any of the tiles that didn't make it. Uh, you draw two more cards to add to your three cards that you are choosing from to place out against people um, to play in your next round. Nobody can see these, only you. And uh, here is your uh, treasure map four by four grid that you are building. Let's go through some of the rules for that, for placement. So let's say this person has these two that they had face down, and this person has these two that they had face down. One, two, three, flip, and this poor guy can't catch a break. And um, here, he's going to choose to uh, discard. This is the lower number, so he's going to discard this one this time, even though a gold piece is on here, because if you discard uh, one of the uh, people or their matching temple piece, then you can never complete uh, that route, and so that is um, points lost for the game. So generally, you're going to try to keep in these as, as much as possible. So let's talk placement. Uh, if you're placing these, you can't do, it's a four by four grid, it must be contained within. So you can't uh, go beyond that and make it be five wide or five tall. You also can't uh, place a tile like kitty corner. It has to be fully, um, look, you have completed this one. It has to be on a side of your choice from what you have built, but no diagonal business. 
uh, you have to place both of them that turn. You can't ever move them around afterwards. So if you've placed this, so this wouldn't be able to move from last time. So if you had had these two here and put this here and put this here, you can't ever move it around. Uh, rules for placement to keep in mind, uh, if you're going to complete a route, uh, it has to be clear for your adventurer to make it to here without any other adventures in the way. So he would never be able to complete this route. This green dude is in the way. Can't make it. Uh, if it's like this, he's made it. And this is where uh, the jewels and crystals start to come in handy. You get three points for completing one of these routes. You get one bonus point if there's a crystal along the way. Um, and you have to take the shortest route. Uh, so if there's a possibility of going a longer way with more crystals, too bad. It's whatever the most direct route is. That's what an adventurer does. Uh, so crystals are worth bonus one. Uh, gold pieces would be worth bonus two. Uh, and this guy's going to place his. It does not matter that this, he has just made it be a dead end. That is totally allowed uh, as long as it's within the four by four grid. Let's skip ahead to the end of a game. Most of the tiles are laid out. Here are the discards. It's the eighth round of play, which is the final. At this point, you had one left, one card left from the previous round. You draw your last remaining card. Yes, you only have two left for this final round. So whatever you have left is what you play out against your opponents. Uh, these two, both of theirs add up to seven this time. And in case of a tie with the two players, if a game, if both players tie, that's it. If there's more players, whatever the two lowest scores are, if those tie, then both of the lowest point value cards out there, you have to discard one of those tiles. So this player is going to choose to discard this five, even though the two it's a lower number because it means he gets to complete this path. And this player, it doesn't matter. So they're just going to discard this. Uh, game is over. It's just eight rounds and then it's over. And you get to tally up your points. Uh, this guy had a rough game. Did not go so well for him. Uh, orange is has a path to his temple, but blue is in the way. So that doesn't count for any points. Blue never made it to his temple. Purple's right by the temple, but facing the wrong direction. It is very important to consult this so you can plan, plan, plan accordingly. Uh, the only one he got to connect was green. And so you get three points for a connected path. And then any uh, jewels along the way, you get bonuses for that. So three plus two, you got five points. On this side, usually how I do scoring just for a shortcut for myself is any completed run, I just count those up and I say, three, six, nine, 12. And then I go back and uh, count up the bonuses. So you've got 12 here and then orange uh, has another three, so that's 15. And then blue gets to use this same one. They aren't blocking each other's paths. They both have clear paths, but they can use the same gems or crystals along the way. So blue got an extra bonus two. So that totals up to 17, 17 to five, this guy won big time. So that's how to play Karuba the card game. It's all the fun of standard Karuba, but with a twist and a little less time, and you don't have to have played uh, regular Karuba in order to appreciate this. Uh, it has quickly become one of our go-to games in the evening, so check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.